Yeah, you're doing pretty good, Kendall. Uh-huh. Yeah, I learned it from Riley. Uh-huh. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. What's up, you glorious sim racers out there? Today we're going to be reviewing the Logitech G29. No, I did not get rid of my expansive motion rig with AccuForce Direct Drive Wheel. More along the lines of I picked up a sim racing wheel uh, cater to what I believe it is most uh, it is the audience that should be using it and that's the Logitech G29 for the entry level wheel to entry level sim racers like you see there's one of my nine year old twins and she is having a blast playing Gran Turismo Sport with the Logitech G29 so let's get into it and uh, cover up some of the or cover some of the things that I've noticed with me playing it I mainly got this wheel for PS4 Play. Obviously a G29 is for PS4 and PC. A G920 would be for Xbox. However, you should be able to use a drive hub, uh, check a review on that, and use this one on your Xbox uh, One as well. So that could save you both, both setups there. So anyway, a really cool device here. We're going into unboxing here and I'm just gonna be talking over this as you can tell. But aesthetically, it's a great looking wheel uh, base with pedals and I picked it up for $208 on Amazon. And at that price point, you know, $208, you can't really go wrong with a full uh, kit like this. I did spend an extra $53, I believe, for the shifter itself. It's a decent shifter. I wouldn't expect the world from it. It does uh, have six speeds, uh, H pattern shifter with reverse does lock down to your desk or you can hard mount it. This one I would suggest hard mount. And actually this whole kit, I would suggest getting a little um, kit like Next Level Racing has as far as like a wheel mount setup and you just roll any chair up to it yourself. That makes it easy to store. However, I just have it mounted up to the desk for my kids and they are loving the setup. So it actually surprised me they actually go in there and play quite often, uh, which, you know, as a father that loves sim racing, and racing in general uh it, it's kind of fun to see how much fun they're having out there so and that's really what it's all about right so and there you know, with the six speed shifter you will learn how to use a you know a clutch and, and shift through the gears and stuff so pretty cool stuff there and moving on to the wheelbase itself love the wheelbase it actually for the price point can't go wrong uh, it has a nice smell to the leather rim there uh, i believe it is real leather it definitely smells like real le leather uh, it's got nice metal panels uh, on there, which is good, and then the wheel and the sorry the um, uh, the clutch assembly, brake assembly, and throttle have metal plates on there too. Aesthetically, it looks really good. Uh, build quality of it, it is pretty good. It has some heft to it. You know, like I said, metal on the shift shifter paddles, uh, hand stitched leather rim, uh, adequate resistance in all three pedals. Surprisingly quiet as well does have the helical gearing uh, which does present some cogging but is actually relatively smooth for what you get uh, you know if you're new to sim racing you're not going to complain about this because you really have no data points to complain about you don't know what you're missing until you try a belt driven wheel and uh, yeah I wouldn't recommend a, I would recommend a belt driven wheel like a Fanatic or something CSL obviously but you know for the price point of $208 I would start here uh, for a new sim racer and obviously that's what I started with uh, with my children because I don't have to worry about them getting hurt with something like this you know 2.2 newton meters of torque is not going to rip their little arms off when they're playing it's not going to scare them they are going to be able to go out there have fun at any time they want and that's what it's about having fun so uh, again it says PS3 PS4 and PC compatible hard mount, desk mount, uh, you, you would actually work with the Xbox One if you bought something like the Collective Minds Drive Hub. It does have 900 degrees rotation, nice little LED light, 14 push buttons plus a D-pad, rotary dial, and the pedal shifters again, like I said before, and the three pedal setup. So pros, of course, obviously is low entry cost, and it works with all your Sony um, games. You know, every game that's on on PlayStation is going to work on this one here. I, I tested it out with GT Sport, obviously, uh, and uh, let me see a set of Corsa 
and the I think it's Drive Drive Club uh, out there. Actually, they all were pretty good. GT Sport being the worst of the three, uh, very lackluster force feedback in GT Sport, but it is what it is. That is just GT Sport. I think GT Sport was catered more for the Thrustmaster TGT, where you can cover the rumble strips and the road feel through a transducer itself, because it does not communicate that very well through the wheel. But once you move to games like a set of Corsa. Uh, man, it feels really, really good. Uh, you, you can feel when the tires break traction. Uh, you can easily control them. Yeah, not as smooth to control as a belt-driven wheel, but again, uh, an entry-level person is not going to know that that is even an issue. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of fun for this price point, I believe. And uh, it's proven out with my uh, two, uh, two girls that they're having a lot of fun with this too. So light forces, not going to hurt your kids, obviously. And, you know, as you move up and you decide you want to get into a sim rig itself, you know, if they decide they want to set into an official, like, leather seat and, and, and be setting properly instead of just sitting in a chair, uh, this will easily mount up to any kind of wheel deck or a sim rig like a Simitech K2 or something like that, which is probably what I would get them. Or maybe the next level racing, you know, just whatever. If anybody wants to throw me one here to review, ha, I will mount it up to that and be glad to do. So, all the cons I have on this thing here is the pedals themselves. Uh, they actually work really good. Uh, the load cell uh, mimicking device on there is it's okay. It's adequate. Uh, a little bit uh, for me to get used to going back to a pitchometer base from load cells. But uh, my kids had no issues with it because they had no data points of what was was uh further advanced than this setup so that little carpet mount there does not work <laughs> very well at all uh even getting it the launch out is kind of a pain at times and uh but other than that though it you still want to block it behind the pedal deck even on carpet to keep it from moving around so oh also i want to mention real quick on pc use i did test it out instead of course for competition as well as Project Cars 2, and it actually worked really well there. I was surprised at the road cars, how well they felt in Project Cars 2. Definitely relayed the information that I needed uh, to drive those uh, cars actually up to speed uh, really well. So I really liked it. So, of course, the competition, of course, has really good force feedback compared to P Cars 2, and it was definitely uh, uh, not lackluster here with, with this wheel. So uh, definitely pushed this wheel to its limits. Uh, with uh, ACC so yeah I really enjoyed it there let me give you my final thoughts here real quick here on this uh, you know this is an entry-level wheel uh, I believe and uh, I think it's catered more for entry-level people that are new to sim racing and it does a really good job it doesn't break the bank if you can pick it up for around two hundred dollars like I did definitely highly worth it uh, with the shifter itself you know 263 shipped to my house that is really the price point that this thing should be sold out at with the shifter itself I believe so uh, testing it out on various games and stuff it didn't disappoint except for GT Sport because GT Sport force feedback is just lackluster uh, like I said but it definitely communicated uh, information to me it just did it in a very muted way uh, but other than that though yeah the game uh, the uh, controller set does the job hard mounts uh, if you want it to desk mounts easy easily portable and uh, obviously has a lot more pros than it does cons. So yeah, highly recommend this uh, G29 for any entry level sim racer out there that's wanting to go out there and just have a blast. Get into the sim racing and uh, not break your bank and uh, get some data points out there to figure out what you really like down the road. So you know, if this becomes a great hobby, uh, then awesome, you're gonna, uh, you know, start emptying your pocketbook into something getting higher end equipment. But if it doesn't, you know what, $200 is not that big of a deal. So uh, at least you shouldn't think of it being that big of a deal because, yeah, that's a low entry cost to get into sim racing. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, leave some comments below what your favorite uh, hardware was or that you started out with that got you into this hobby and uh, uh, evolved it into what you're doing now. So check you later, I'm out. <laughs>